Glad to have you back here at First Christian Church for our Sunday School lesson. And we are continuing our studies here in Exodus. And in our last class, we, uh, we left Moses, was on top of Mount Sinai, uh, talking with God. And God was giving him the Ten Commandments, writing with his own finger on two stone tablets. Um, and Moses had been on the mountain for a long time, uh, meeting with God and talking with him and getting God's instructions. And we learn we're up to chapter 32 in Exodus, and we find out that the Hebrews, who were not allowed to go on the mountain with Moses, they're all down there at the bottom, uh, were getting impatient, and their faith started to waver. And suddenly they were uh, asking uh, Aaron, you know, to uh, Moses' brother, asking him. They wanted to worship something they could see, they, you know, something physical. And they started uh, asking Aaron, hey, we want you to make us an, uh, a figure that we can worship. So surprisingly, Aaron agreed, and he had all the people take their gold rings and their gold earrings and bring them to him, and he was able to mold them. Uh, and he molded them into a golden calf, yeah, a cow, so to speak, and, um, and said, hey, these are the gods that brought you out of Egypt, you know, and saved you. Worship them. Really? You know, after the true God, you know, brought the plagues, parted the Red Sea, you know, went before you in a cloud and fire, and now you're going to worship this thing you just saw Aaron made? Um, wow, just it's just unbelievable and shows how quickly people uh, will just lose faith uh, in what they can't see and start believing in material things. And it's just... Uh, uh, really surprising. So Moses and God back on Mount Sinai, God tells Moses, you need to go back down this mountain because some bad things are happening down at the bottom. These people have made a false idol and are starting to worship them. And I'm really upset. God was really angry and he told Moses, you know what, I'm just going to wipe them all out and I'm just going to create a new nation through you, Moses. And Moses pled with God and says, please don't do that. You know, you made a promise to the people that their descendants will inherit the promised land, that, uh, you know, they will get to live there. And besides, if you do that, the Egyptians will think that the people were killed out of punishment for not serving the old Egyptian gods, and we don't want to give that impression. And believe it or not, uh, through Moses' prayer, and uh, in request to God, God changed his mind, which is just fascinating to me that uh, God's mind can be changed. Uh, and so God said, okay, I won't wipe them all out. Um, there will be a punishment, but I, I won't wipe them out. I, you need to go down there and deal with them. So Moses climbs down Mount Sinai and... Um, he gets down to the bottom. He's still got the two tablets with the Ten Commandments written with God's hand. And he sees the golden calf. And then Moses gets really angry at this point. And he throws the tablets down and they break. And he goes up to the calf and he essentially gets it and melts it down. And grounds it up to little specks of gold and pours it into the water. And then he makes the Hebrew drink the water with the gold in it because uh, he's so mad. And then he speaks to the people and asks them to choose. Are you going to follow God or are you going to follow these you know, false idols that you have made? And so the Hebrews kind of divided up. And, uh, and the ones who chose God went one direction. And the ones who just really didn't care, uh, you know, they were described as kind of wild people, went to the other. And God, uh, uh, Moses said to these, um, you know, you will be done away with those who chose not to follow God. And the Bible tells that uh, essentially they were, um, uh, the people of God uh, were ordered, the Levites, 
uh, which was a tribe um, of, of Jacob, as you might recall. They were ordered to go and kill the ones who weren't going to follow God, and that's what they did, and they followed his instructions. And so, any event, um, afterwards, the um, Moses is... Uh, ordered back upon the mountain. Actually, Moses has been told to make a tent down at the bottom of the mountain. And this tent was going to be a new meeting place where God and Moses could meet. So he makes this tent. And when Moses would go into this tent, and it's called a tabernacle, the uh, this tent, when God wanted to go and speak with Moses, he would come down in a cloud and be at the entrance of the tent, and people could see that, and God and Moses would talk in the, in the tent. And um, and they would discuss, you know, how he, want God, how he wanted the Hebrews to live and the rules of worshiping him and a bunch of other stuff. And then eventually God asked Moses to go back on top of Mount Sinai alone, which Moses did. And so he uh, climbed back up Mount Sinai, and once again, he uh, cut out two more stone tablets, Moses did, uh, which I suspect was really hard work. And then once he did, God, once again, in his own handwriting, uh, wrote the Ten Commandments on those stones. It's just been so neat to be able to see uh, the finger of God writing on these tablets. Anyway, after the second Ten Commandments were made, Moses made a very interesting request. He asked to be able to, he wanted to see God's glory. And God was like, okay. He goes, well, you can't see my face because no man can see my face and live. It just, uh, it just can't happen. But what I will do is I will cover your face, Moses, and when I pass by, um, I will take my hand away, and you will be able to see my backside um, as I uh, go by. And so that's what's happening. Moses got to see the back of God, which is just, oh, that'd be so cool. Which, uh, you know, the interesting thing about that, that kind of tells us maybe God does have a face and a back. You know, it does... Bible does tell us we're made in His image, and I've always wondered how much of His image are we made in, and... Uh, so if we take this passage literally, then, you know, it does suggest God has a face, you know, in the back. Um, and that Moses got to see that. Well, now Moses gets to come down Mount Sinai, and he's carrying the two tablets. And when the people see him, his face is just glowing. It's shining, and, and the people are just mesmerized because, you know, God is, you know, Moses has been in God's presence. Um, and that must have been a sight to see. And God had told Moses that you all are going to now be leaving Mount Sinai area, and you're going to head to Canaan at this point, towards the promised land that, uh, that he promised to give to them, even though other people were living there at that time. So, and the interesting thing is, you know, uh, People have been searching where the actual Mount Sinai is, and there's different opinions. And you can go on YouTube and see a lot of different videos. One that has caught my eye is um, a mountain that's really close to the rock uh, that was split that I showed you last week. And here's a picture of that split rock where water had come out of, um, according to the Bible. And there's a mountain close by that has a blackened peak that um, when you get towards the top, the top of it's black. And some people think this could be Mount Sinai, and that would be the black part is evidence of where God had descended down on the mountain in the form of a fire to talk to Moses. Um, we don't know if that's the case or if this, in fact, is the mountain. Here's pictures of it I'm showing you here, and you can kind of see where the top of it is, in fact, black. And it is very close to that split rock. So it is interesting to think that maybe this could be the location of Mount Sinai. Other people think it's close to, uh, it's in a diff little different region in the Sinai Peninsula, close to where St. Catherine's Monastery is. 
Um, so, but we really don't know for sure, and we don't really need to know because we have these wonderful stories, um, and uh, and the meaning of it isn't uh, contingent on you knowing the exact location. Um, the importance is that we do have these Ten Commandments and that we are to follow those. Um, and that even after Jesus came, he, he didn't say we shouldn't follow those Ten Commandments. He, his life was, in fact, a fulfillment of those Ten Commandments. So, um, you know, so it's something we need to adhere to. And, you know, in, in today's lesson, we need to keep in mind that even though we may not be able to see God, we may not be able to see uh, face to face with Jesus. You know, He's there. He is in everything, and um, our belief should not waver. Um, we shouldn't just believe in things we can see, because God created so many wonderful things. I can't imagine there being an earth, trees, you know, the sky without a supreme being that's meeting them and although making them and even though we cannot see him my belief is in him is very strong as i hope yours is too and the more that you read these bibles and see the stories uh, the stronger my faith comes and that what i don't see uh, and i hope you'll do the same as you continue to read through and follow these stories now, next week, we're going to learn about the Ark of the Covenant. For any of those of you who may have watched the Indiana Jones movies, you'll love this story coming up. It talks about the creation of the Ark and, and what went in it. So you're not going to want to miss that uh, next week. And regarding our workbook, we are going to be working on pages 144 through 147. Um, and it's the parts of the Green Bible here that talks about, we got our uh, Holy Bible here, the green one, and it's going to show you like opening pages, like our next uh, book here is Leviticus, and it's going to teach you a little bit about um, how, you know, the writers of the Bible, not actually the Bible, but the makers of these Bibles also put helpful things in there so to help you better understand the Bible, and they're going to teach you how to find those and use those so that you, before you start reading a book, will better understand it. So pages 144 through 147, and I hope you have a wonderful week. Study your Bible, find stories that you enjoy and read them, and through that you will become closer to God and understanding Him and loving Him. We'll see you next week. God bless.